It's a case that has fascinated all of us. When the murder of a 14-year-old girl, Arushi Talwar, along with domestic help, Hemraj, was reported in 2008, it was a whodunit which the country became obsessed with. We followed investigations, the trial, and then almost two years ago, in 2013 November, a CBI court said it was the parents who did it, Rajesh and Rupur Talwar. Many were divided on this, and now a new book written by journalist Aviruk Sen raises even more questions about the case. And we'll speak to him and others who are associated. But first, what's it been for the Talwars in jail? The book carries excerpts of Rajesh Talwar's diary. Take a look. Their movement to and from court, being taken to custody after being convicted for daughter Arushi's murder, the Talwars have never been able to escape the limelight. And now a new book reveals what's happened to Rajesh and Nupur Talwar since their conviction in November 2013. Author Aviruk Sen says Talwar shared the contents of his diary written in Dasna jail for the first two months with him. Talwar makes entries of how he's summoned every time a VIP like the law minister visits the jail. He says he felt like a zoo animal whom people wanted to see. Also says IPL Kings 11 Punjab player Parminder Ravana visited Dasna and met him too. Rajesh Talwar remarks he doesn't know why. Expressing a deep loathing for the media, Talwar's diary is filled with entries about the daughter he's been accused of killing, blaming himself for not saving her from her alleged killers. He says, if only I would have gotten up, I could not even save my dear Aru. Nupur and Rajesh, says the book, now spend their time running a dental clinic in jail. And Rajesh Talwar has also befriended other accused doctors of the rural health scam, who are also lodged in the same jail. So interesting details in the diary, but the book Arushi has also raised other questions that have been central to the case and not just to this case, but other criminal cases as well. Questions about the criminal justice system, how investigations are carried out, how evidence is collected, and then when the judgment is delivered, is it really about justice or do other factors play a major part as well. Let me bring in the panel to speak about these issues. We, of course, have Avirok Sen here in studio. Congratulations. It was, it's a really a telling book. It brings out new things as well. And I think because the case is still ongoing in court, we all want to, you know, it, it makes for relevant reading. We Thank also you. have uh, the you. families, uh, Rajesh Talwar's brother, Dr. Dinesh Talwar, his wife, uh, Dr. Vandana Talwar, we have joining us, the CBI, of course, did not want to come because they say it's sub -judice. it's a case which is ongoing. But we have someone who has been closely associated with it, someone who was DGP of Uttar Pradesh at that time. Remember, it was UP police which was handling this case initially. And so we have Vikram Singh joining us from Lucknow. In studio, we also have the lawyer who handled it in the trial case, Tanvir Ahmed Meer. And interestingly, because the book talks a lot about how forensics play a part or don't play a part in the entire investigations, we have Dr. S.K. Shukla, former director of CFSL, and they played a major small part as well in looking at some of the details in this particular case. So first, Avirok, I really want to start with you. And the first impression that we get is you obviously don't believe that the Talwars are guilty. On the basis of the evidence presented in court, there is no way you can call them guilty on the basis of the evidence presented in court. Tomorrow, if someone comes up with something entirely new and startling, then I will, of course, change that position. But at the trial court, what we heard, what we saw, on the basis of that, you cannot pronounce two people guilty. You know that the CBI, when I confronted them, some of the officers who've been associated with the case, and I asked them to come and speak about it and confront some of the issues that you raised in your book. They felt that, you know, you were a little biased. You got carried away with that. They said that, yes, you were reporting throughout, like all of us were coming and you extensively went every day and covered it. But they felt that you were speaking for the family. What would you say to those people who feel that? Let me throw that back at you. You've read the book. What do you think? Am I biased? No, I think that when some, like you're saying, when you're you're obviously convinced of a certain point of view. Based on the evidence. Based on the evidence. You test the evidence. You see it. You check it for authenticity. You check it for provenance and all of that. 
and then you come to your conclusions. This is not about belief. Our problem here is a problem of perception, perhaps, you know, in, in how this is played out. This is a very polarizing case. Every drawing room has two sides, uh, one of which says guilty, the other says not guilty. And, and they both seem to say it with some kind of conviction or belief, sure. not on the basis of evidence. Uh, what this book tries to do uh, is actually bring out all the evidence and then you judge for yourself. Dr. Vandana Talwar, I have to ask you because, you know, the appeal is still pending now. There's been no, I know that the family has been objecting to the fact that you haven't got a hearing yet. Others point out, look, that's what our legal system is like. Cases go on for years. Do you, are you now hoping with this issue becoming relevant again, people talking about it, that this will help your case now? Well, this book has brought out a lot of points which were not probably uh, the, uh, which were not known to a lot of people. So it might help in changing the public perception a bit because it does give a detailed and comprehensive account of whatever events happened after Arushi's murder. And I think as you go through the book, uh, you uh, realize that all the uh, twists and turns of the case, when you go through all of them, you do realize that Rajesh and Nupur have not committed the crime. So those who are not aware of this and once they go through the book, I'm sure they're going to realize that actually who has committed the crime? It is the media who has committed the crime. It is the UP police who has committed the crime. It is the CBI which has committed the crime. And I think it's even the judiciary which has committed the crime. So I'm sure and I hope that the book will, try, will uh, change the public perception and bring forward the various facts of the case, which people should look at in a neutral manner and not be biased one way or the other. Well, I can just tell you as someone who has been following the entire case and reported on it as well, what it did do definitely for me is to, yes, question some of the, made me rethink about the CBI's position and some of the instruments perhaps that they use to get to their conclusions. So that's where I want to bring in, uh, you know, our police representative uh, again, Mr. Vikram Singh, because the CBI doesn't want to speak about it at all. But as Vandana Talwar is saying that they feel they were totally wronged, the judgment came out. And when you go through the book, what is evident even to reporters like all of us, you know, we brought, we accepted the judgment, we all have to accept the court's judgment, but it does raise various questions about the way the police operates, Mr. Singh. Uh, so would you want to talk about that? That is it, is it right? Because the book totally shows that the CBI is always out instead of focusing on scientific evidence, it's only looking to get confessions. Why is that? Uh, you see, all of us are free citizens of this free country and everybody is welcome to have his own viewpoint. This book, like all books, it's a very welcome thing. But at the same time, if what they are saying is as incontrovertible and as infallible as the evidence produced in the court, things would have been very different. Not a single court on any occasion has given any relief to the Talwars. What Madam Talwar has just insinuated that the murder was committed by the CBI, by the UP police and the media, I dare say the murder was committed by the Talwars. In spite of their insidious efforts to derail the investigation, misguide the UP police, they failed miserably. Okay, sir. At the same time, sir, it let's is to the credit of the generics. UP police and the CBI. I want to bring up specific statements. For instance, let's go by the one case, one instance which is talked about in the book, which is the, which is what the defence has always upheld, they feel that the pillow uh, and the swapping of it. Now, just the fact that the CBI accepted in court that the pillow case was a typo, was a typo which emerged years later, at least two years later, right, Dr. Talpan? Two, and two and years later. Now, sir, <clears throat> just that bit I want to ask you, sir, if CBI is indeed a specialized agency and it is one that everyone looks up to, why did it take them two and a half years to discover a typo like that, that the pillow was actually swapped. It, it took the defense, it took the accused to go through the papers and find it out. Are you asking me? Yes, sir. Yes. First, to begin with, the scene of the crime, the room and the house was dressed up very, very elaborately to misguide and derail the investigation. No, so tell me about the pillow case. Now, I want to understand, I asked you a very specific question, that the pillow case, you have said that there was a typo. The defense says that the fact that the pillow case was 
was found there was you know it shows that there was somebody from the servants it was the presence of krishna a third person who hasn't been accused that's what the defense claims it shows that they their involvement cbi says no not at all it wasn't krishna's at all it was a typo now what i wanted to my question is very simple sir if cbi is indeed a specialized agency why did it take the police so many years to figure out that there is a huge typo there is a huge problem with the evidence that they've got to your specific question i'm giving a very specific answer yes the room and the scene of crime and the house was dressed up very elaborately with the sense to derail the investigation and it would have taken the cbi some time to distinguish what is the truth what is admissible and what can be produced in a court but of law but this was a cdft everything that this you was a forensic laboratory report i think uh, mr vikram Correct. singh you're not aware of what she's asking the there's a problem here why don't you tell us about because the issue is not material. of the issue was of a pillow cover which was seized from krishna's room the report from cdfd shows that there is blood of hemraj and on that and the dna of of hemraj on that pillow cover this report was there from 2008 onwards this actually precisely uh, the the uh, it supports the uh, narcos which were already available yeah. with the cbi which showed the involvement of the servants now to when this is pointed out to them in the high court two years later on after the event mm -hmm. because that's when these papers became available you, you to you pointed the, out to them to, you well, discovered yes, it yeah the lawyers pointed mm -hmm. it out and it was given as a supplementary affidavit at that time the the uh, cbi comes up with an answer that this is a typographical right, error right exactly that and right. the fact remains that this typographical error was not available on the record the the exactly. lab had not Which confirmed this yeah. the the high court is given to understand that there is an error and then after the high court judgment the cdfd is asked to give a letter saying that there is a typo which is what the whole yeah. book is full of and you point out various instances of how these things are constantly overlooked not mm. by the first cbi not just by the you know first cbi team but the also the second yeah. i had a question for for our guest from lucknow yes which is he said that the scene of the crime was so well dressed up your word sir that it was almost impossible for the cbi to actually work things out and all of that right now the cbi comes into the picture 15 days after the crime is committed it is your police sir that was there the first day so this dressing up that you are referring to what are you referring to the state the 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 crime scene was found 15 days after it having been in your police's custody you were at the time the head of the force so who dressed up the scene was it you and secondly the question also for up police sure. is to answer that if they found a crime scene now every crime scene is to be protected it is mm -hmm. to be sealed was the crime scene protected and sealed by the up police officials perhaps every person on the street that day yeah came up and saw what was happening in the flat right and the up police officials I, I permitted mr meer i think it's become legendary now uh, about how badly the crime scene was treated i think another kind of general aspect that this book point towards points towards and the state of our system is how forensic evidence is hardly even contended with would you say that avirok that you found that no one is actually looking at it no one is relying on it people only relying on confessions or extracting confessions or statements and they're not looking at how the the actual investigation for instance you point at the book points out how even though the cbi has said that the crime was committed with surgical weapons the scalpel but yeah. they never actually asked for it to be tested uh then in fact it goes a little further than that and tanveer will will back me up on this uh nobody had actually seen even a scalpel the cbi officers who were who were investigating the case were asked directly by tanveer great question i thought uh did you even try and buy one from the market forget seizing one from the talwars and the answer was no i believe yes. right he had never seen a scalpel so a dental scalpel is actually a, a very tiny instrument to cut a carotid artery with that but no one bothered with this of course not